الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لحبت في الله this is the hadith الثالث from امام النووي 40 النووي رحمه الله عليه and we ask Allah the azza wa jal to make it beneficial for us all and bless us all with ikhlas with the bad ala sunnah and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq and all that we try to do and may Allah bless the Muslims everywhere ameen ya rabbil alameen an nabi abdurrahman abdillah bin umar bin al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul buni al-islam ala khams buni al-islam ala khams shahadati an la ilaha illallah وأن محمد رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان رواه بخاري ومسلم. In this hadith of Abi Abdurrahman ibn Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنهما the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala in. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Islam is based on five, the, the testimony that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is, his messen is the messenger of Allah. And to establish the prayer and to pay the zakat and to perform hajj and fast Ramadan. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was born in the second year of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's prophethood alayhi salatu wasalam and he became a Muslim of course when he was young and he made hijra and when he made hijra he was uh, 11 uh, 11 years old and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made him go back on the in the battle of badr and uhud because he was too young and the other ghazawat of the Prophet ﷺ, he, uh, shared in. And he was known as one of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, that were mo that were most adherent, uh, uh, very stern and strict in adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and he was known for his ibadah. In this hadith, this hadith illustrates for us, of course, the pillars of Islam. And regarding the pillars of Islam, the Shaykh mentions, and this is Shaykh Sa'ad ibn Sa'id al Hajri, Allah Ta'ala, in his explanation of Arba'in al Nawawi, which we will go through because it's very simple, it's very easy and concise full of a lot of very nice benefits taken from many of the benefits of the ulama of this, of, of Ahl Sunnah. And he said, one of the, the things here that he mentions is that the Arkan al-Islam Arba that are mentioned, or of course the Khamsa Arkan al-Islam, uh, but he mentions that they have four different categories. He said the first category is اتقاد, uh, is those categories that uh, of the pillars of Islam which relate to the heart, relate to belief in the heart. And of course that at first that is the Shahada, the Shahadatan, bearing witness that there is no God worthy worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that has to do with ittiqad. Uh, that is uh, uh, ittiqadi qalbi. This is uh, this pillar 
is divided into or can into that which pertains to the creed and the heart and of course it's uttered on the tongue as well of course uh, the second type that he mentioned is a'mal al-badni al-mahda those actions which are done with the body they're acts of ibadah with the body that are purely with the body and he mentions like the prayer and fasting as well and then he mentions as the third category he says amal maliya ma he says the third category is those that ibadah which has to do with wealth like zakat and sadaqa and the fourth category he mentions a'mal badniya maliya those uh, actions which are with the body pertaining to wealth and he mentions that hajj and umrah and that they they have to do with that because they uh, require of course wealth to perform those acts of ibadah uh, and they are badniya as well primarily that does not mean that all of these acts of ibadah don't contain all aspects because they all require the intention. But this is just a categorization the Shaykh had mentioned. Some of the fawaid of this hadith is that Islam, uh, this, had, this hadith uh, illustrates for us the arkan or the pillars of Islam and that Islam is built upon these five pillars. So these five pillars are incredibly important for every Muslim to know and understand and the scholars of Islam they discuss extensively with regards to the person who abandons these uh, pillars after the Shahada especially after the Shahada Shahada you can't abandon the one who abandons the Shahada is clearly not a Muslim if they don't utter the Shahada even if they believe in their heart the ulama of Islam they say this person uh, died as a disbeliever so you must utter the testimony of faith. Regard to the other pillars, uh, the ulama differ about the one who leaves, for example, leaving the prayer, uh, the ulama of Sunnah, there's different aqwal or different statements regarding the one who leaves this great pillar of Islam. And one, perhaps one of the stronger goal is that the one who leaves the prayer is a disbeliever because the Prophet ﷺ said Man salat fakad kafara. whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved so uh, and, and other nasus that illustrate uh, the importance of the prayer and that leaving it is a type of disbelief so the ulama as we said that they differ with regards to the various pillars of Islam and the person leaving off those pillars uh, and, and the hukum regarding them. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is that it is imperative to have al-ihtimam biqaloob akthar min al-abdan is that Islam requires us to be more vigilant in guarding our hearts than our bodies and this is why the this is is illustrated in, in the shahadatain and that this issue of ittiqad that the ulama are in agreement that leaving off the shahada of course is disbelief without any question so letting us know the importance of aqidah and creed and that that forms uh, an important foundation of Islam and Tawheed. Islam is built upon Tawheed, upon the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Him and Him alone, uh, knowing and un uh, understanding and supplicating to Him by His divine names and attributes, and recognizing and acknowledging His subhanahu wa ta'ala's right to rulership and lordship, and that He is the creator of the heavens and earth and the sustainer which necessitate, necessitates uh, worshiping him and him alone, Subhanahu. Also, this hadith illustrates for us 
the status of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, the importance of worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone as we mentioned Tawheed and the status of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his Sunnah must be followed that we have to that's what completes our Islam and in order to have our deeds accepted of course we have to have sincerity in our worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we have to follow our acts of worship. It have to be in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to practice those arkan of Islam, those things need to be in place. To practice your Islam, you need to have sincerity to Allah and follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit of this hadith, Ahabit Tifillah, is the effect of the prayer and uh, in its establishment, that when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and establish the salat, that this, uh, this draws you nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is, your, this is your means of establishing uh, worship and communication with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala when you supplicate to Him, when you supplicate to Him and make dua in uh, sujood. This is when you're nearest to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a time and this uh, arkan or this hadith illustrates for us the importance of establishing the prayer and the effect of the prayer upon the mu'min. This hadith also shows us the wujub iqamat salat that it's an obligation to establish the prayer and we already mentioned that uh, briefly. Also that this hadith illustrates for us the importance of zakat and giving zakat to those, uh, to the asnaf of zakat, those people who are deserving of zakat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. Another benefit of this hadith is the importance of uh, purifying the heart and the body and one's wealth. That Islam encourages us to do all of those things. That when we, uh, by making the shahada and believing in it, and uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this purifies the heart. This is one of the means in which we purify our hearts. And purifying our, our bedin by making wudu, this is a physical purification, and ghusl, these things uh, purify us for the prayer and keep us clean likewise. You know, they in, in, instill in, in us the importance of cleanliness. And purification of the wealth, of course, is by giving in charity. When you spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a purification of your wealth. Because this is something a lot of times we're attached to and we love. And when we can give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this purifies it and it helps to purify us and our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after Alif Lam Mim, so in the, the last verse there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And what we've given them, they uh, spend. Letting us know those are the sifat of the mu'min. They believe in the ghayb. They establish the prayer. And they spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And may Allah bless us to be of them. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Another benefit of this hadith is the importance of uh, establishing the hajj for those who are able to do so. And another fa'idah of this hadith is of course the obligation to som, Ramadan. And something else the Shaykh mentioned is that a person is not considered or not called a Muslim if unless they establish those uh, those pillars and finally whoever leaves a pillar one from amongst there then they have fallen into disbelief and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil